This is Startup Storefront. There's nothing better than a home-cooked meal. As the pan simmers, the tantalizing aromas fill the air, and everyone's taste buds begin to salivate in excitement. For Hector Saldivar, the founder of Tia Lapita, sharing his family's hot sauce recipe is akin to welcoming you into his kitchen for a home-cooked meal. In Latin American culture, and others, family recipes are passed down from generation to generation. Hector, with his mother's blessing, has taken her hot sauce and bottled it for everyone to enjoy. Some recipes are just too good not to share with the world. Tia Lapita sells cactus chips, grain-free tortillas, and the best hot sauce on the market. Listen in as we discuss how Hector convinced his mom to let him commercialize their secret family hot sauce recipe, why the large Hispanic brands are out of touch with today's consumer, and why Border Patrol agents started questioning the increasingly large amounts of home-cooked hot sauce being brought over the Mexico-American border. And thank you to Cat Footwear for sponsoring this episode. They're a premier shoe company that empowers builders and doers to reframe the world to create something more meaningful. And on that note, let's jump into the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Hector from Tia Lupita. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Thank you so much, guys. We're very excited. For people who don't know, what is Tia Lupita Foods? What's the company do? Tia Lupita is a better for you Mexican inspired food brand that uses clean, simple ingredients in all of our products. And we are the first brand in the United States to introduce cactus or nopales as an alternative, functional, sustainable ingredient in our line of tortilla chips and tortillas. And what made you want to start the company? Like, what was the first thing you were trying to... Because I know, I know, at least in our culture, yeah. like trying to get my mom to eat healthy or, you know, my tias to eat healthy can be kind of difficult. Sometimes right. they're like, I don't I want my sugar. I want this, right? And so it's, it's like once the word healthy gets in there, they're like, I don't want it anymore. Right. And so we're careful with, 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 with the word with the healthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we tend to lean into better for you, right? It's a better option uh, than, than other products. I've been in food and beverage, consumer packaged goods all my life. That's how I did my career. That's what brought me to the United States. I'm originally from Monterey, Mexico. And I came here 17 years ago. I drove my 1999 Nissan Altima. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like the old model. Like it, yeah. like it was like the, it looked, hor- it looked horrible. Not the, the new fancy bigger version. I drove it from Monterey to Sacramento. Took me two and a half days, two, two speeding tickets. Uh, <laughs> one in, one in Chihuahua while crossing Chihuahua. You don't want to get stopped by the Federales <laughs> yeah. there. And so I landed in Sacramento with a Mexican startup that was commercializing and, and, and distributing a powdered soft drink, kind of like Kool-Aid or Tang, but with uh, Hispanic flavors. I was frescas, you know, horchata, uh, hibiscus, tamarind, all that stuff. And, and yeah, so that's how I started my food and beverage CPG life adventure. And from there, I've been progressing, you know, through the ranks and other different comp- companies. Then I worked for Nestle and then Diamond Foods. And through this journey... I started to realize that, you know, that the Mexican brands that were being offered here or the Latino or Hispanic brands that were being offered here were, number one, not updating their ingredient lists. They were still using a lot of, uh, you know, high sodium, artificial ingredients, binders, fillers, a lot of junk. They were not innovating. They were just very comfortable just offering just, just your bland, approachable flavors and foods. And I think most importantly, also what I realized is that for new generations, and especially an acculturated Mexican like myself, they have lost their authenticity or their originality. Um, I, I don't know if I can mention brands or not, but the, imagine these yeah, yeah, tired sure. legacy brands that have been in the shelf for 50, 60 years. For new generations, these are mainstream brands. They've lost their authenticity. They've lost their originality. Yeah. And, and, and then they're not keeping up with the new trends. And so that's that's how I started ideating that there was a, a big... So you saw that in the market. You were like, white okay, this space, is an interesting exactly. area. Okay, so then you're like, all right, cool. I see the space. And then how do you decide what product to go yeah. for first, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here's here, here's what happens. So when I moved here, my mom, Lupita, uh, would, would send me... People care- don't know the, the, your, the, the company name is after your mother. Yeah, my, my, the company's name is after my mom. Lupita, Guadalupe, Guadalupe, well, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I, I think she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, as a normal mom, would send me care packages, sure. right? You know, granted, a regular care package from a mom would be like a sweater, maybe some socks, a little money. That would be nice. My mom would send me hot sauce. 
a family recipe hot sauce that she made. And this family recipe had been passed down to a single family member of each generation. Because I, I like to explain it this way. You know, in, in Mexico, we don't inherit cars or jewelry or money. We're too poor. <laughs> what gets passed down to us are our family recipes, right? But that's, that's how our family legacy uh, yeah, pa passes on or continually. You will always hear a Mexican say, ooh, I'm going to, you know, make my, my aunt's enchiladas. Or, oh, there's a party. Ooh, I'm going to make, you know, my grandmother's mole, right? So that, that, those are the family recipes. That's how we pay homage that's and tribute. True. That's why Day of the Dead so big, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. We do that in Peru. It's a turkey thing. So if you think about this, right? So Peru, Thanksgiving isn't, like in most places, isn't a thing, right? Yeah, no. And so we move to America, and then it's like Thanksgiving, and no one in the family knows how to cook a turkey because no one's ever done that before. Right. And so my grandma makes this, like, she made the best turkey on the planet, frankly. Like it, and it's this delicious recipe. And now you can, like, Google Peruvian turkey recipes. And I think, I think it's, like, something they used to use with chicken. And then they just did a little something else, added right. some, some Coca-Cola to it, and like so all these like secret stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, but it's the best turkey on earth. And uh, to your point, it's like the grandma's recipe. Right. It's every time we make it, oh, we got to use grandma's recipe. Grandma's recipe, yeah. for and sure. It's like right? on a that... little index card somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think eventually these recipes... Each on, with each generation get tweaked. Right, right? sure. Get yeah, each each person adds yeah. their yeah. own. I, I removed the Coca Cola. Yeah. Yeah. I was like we're not doing. <laughs> we, that. Don't that. Yeah. we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't drink that anymore. And so was the first product the hot sauce? Yeah. So that was that. So that which hot, one was it? Which one? It's the the, the red one. The, the original. The, okay. Yeah, the original. Yep. The what we call the OG. It By was, the way, they're you're, they're amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. So, so for people listening, yeah. we, we were lucky enough to get all the products sent to us before this interview, which helps a lot. Yeah. And Owen, who's our video guy over there, real, like literally will not share it. He's <laughs> like, they're all for me. And they're just gone. And the chips become really vessels for all, all the yes. sauces. I was, I was mixing the Chipotle and the Habanero. That was really yeah. good. But dude, fantastic product. So, so fantastic the, product. The story about the chips, that, that, that's how, how they came about. Where how do I, I eat the hot sauce? I, I was, <laughs> how do I sample? How do I sample? Right. Exactly. So right. I was sampling the hot sauce. Exactly. Okay, but but I mean, just to answer your your question, it was surprising to me that when I started sharing my mom's hot sauce with in the care packages, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the guy yeah. who brought the hot sauce to work, right? Like yeah. the workplace, yeah. like uh, I, I want to try some homemade <laughs> hot sauce. Exactly. <laughs> and so, dude, what's that bottle? Like, you know, immediately when they, they see like a, a funky looking bottle that doesn't have a label, it just like it's like, what is that? I was like, oh, it's it's my, my, my mom's hot sauce. I put it on my salad or my sandwiches. I was like, can I, can I have some of that? Like yeah yeah I'll, I'll, yeah you know, it's it's spicy and that's the other thing that 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 I that I, that I started to realize and that, that I've seen change over the over the years is that the American palate has has evolved mm -hmm. tremendously and in Mexico we've always had that perception that here in the United States you know uh, you know American people were, couldn't tolerate uh, spicy yeah. foods yeah. right that was our, that's the Mexican thing that's our thing oh we like spicy food right and you know, Americans don't don't so. I was kind of surprised to see that when I started sharing my mom's hot sauce, people started falling in love with it, literally falling in love with it. And, you know, every time I went back to Mexico to visit, like, they would intercept me on the hallway or like, dude, heard you're going to Mexico. Can you tell your mom to, to, to make me a bottle? I'll pay or, or whatnot. And so it started evolving and growing that way, you know, until, until it became kind of unsustainable, like, guys. I cannot take any more orders. I'm My leaving. mom's working around exactly, the clock. Exactly, <laughs> man. It's like a, I'm leaving clothes behind. <laughs> I, the, the, the custom agents are getting suspicious. Like, dude, what are you yeah, doing? And like, last sauce. time you right, came yeah. here, you were bringing three. Now you're bringing like 13 bottles. Like, what's up? And so, yeah. uh, you're paying them off with hot sauce. You're like, here's some for you. Here's a little hot sauce for you. Vaya con Dios. And so that was kind of like the the a little bit of aha moment or. Or like there's something here, and I think there, there's another conversation that happened. Well, well, that that the same thing. Like guys, it's I cannot be bringing hot sauce all the time, yeah. and so it's the quintessential. Well, you have to you have to bottle it, man. You have to make sure. it. You're, you're gonna you know. Yeah, you, it's you, so good. It's so Everyone good. Should exactly. Everybody this. should should everybody should deserves it. And I think from there the seed got planted. It was not immediate, right? Yeah. It, but it was. It took years of. The seed got planted, and and then the the irrigation and the taking, and it, and it started to grow into this idea of there's a possibility, right, of, of of me doing this, and 
and yeah, that that's kind of how how it all came about. And so then then do you do you bring your mom into like uh, you you fly her over to Sacramento? You're like, all right, let's go. Let's start start playing with other flavors, dude, maybe. Exactly right. And I, she's I, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hector, well, what so are you remember, doing, and, honey? So, and so remember, <laughs> you left your job for this. What are so, you doing? And so remember this. This is a, a family recipe passed down to a single family member. Right. My mom had to pass it down either to me or, or I have two sisters, right? Mm. Um, so, a lot of, a so she was you. she was already <laughs> she had already been approached by many people in Mexico, like uh, uh, other family members, friends, p- other people that had tried it like Lupita, if you give me the recipe, I'll blow it up, I'll take it, I'll give you a share, blah blah, blah. Like, and she, my mom is one of those persons that's super nervous. She gets super worried, super flustered. That's why she wears that curler because of her bangs. And she gets super hot and the bangs keep falling on her, on her head. And she's like, <laughs> so anyway, see, so I did have to convince my mom. I, I had to call her and say, hey, I think I, I have this idea. I think I want to take a shot and in, in, in commercializing and in, 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 in building the hot sauce. And so she's like, oh, well, did you ask your sisters? Because maybe they want to do the hot sauce too, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Because sure. oh. she's being a mom, right? Yeah. She's like, yeah, well, you... Yeah, yeah, I know. That's I haven't hilarious. made my decision yet. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's going to one of you. I don't know. What have They're, you done for me lately, yeah. Eddie? Uh, <laughs> they so. really are treating it like an heirloom, like a, like a jewelry. Ab- or absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so lucky for me, my two sisters were not interested at all in like learning or you know, trying to do anything with the hot sauce. Actually, they were kind of supportive. Like, yeah, bro, you, you do it. You're, you're the food guy. You're the CPG guy. Go, go and run with it. But to your point... I did have to fly my mom in yeah. because it's yeah. different for her to, you know, over the phone, right. you know, Make tell me how to do it. Bottles no, and by the way, she didn't have measurements. Right, like, right. They, like all, they, this is yeah. like, yeah. this is, so how, how much is that, mom, on the measurement? Oh, it's two wooden spoons. It's like, what does that mean? Well, the universal right, measurement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the universal measurement of two wooden spoons. I don't know what, how many would. So uh, we had to bring her over, and uh, uh, I, uh, you know, she spent a, a whole week and a half just like teaching me. We have pictures of her in my kitchen, you know, wearing her apron and teaching me how to prep, prep the peppers and all that stuff. So, so yeah, I, I, and, and then making making sure that we could scale it up. That's the thing about business. Is it's fine to have one good product, but you really have to have like four or five, six, right? Amazing bangers. And it's hard to do. It's one and one is hard enough, never mind two, three, four, five. And so once you had that, I mean, you knew the CPG game. And so did you raise capital? What was the capital looking like? Did you just put all your life savings into yeah. it? So at first we bootstrapped. And okay. uh, I say we because I have my wife and, and yeah. I like to say she's like family. the silent partner, right? And mm-hmm. she's the boss. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's not silent. Yeah. <laughs> she's, 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 believe me, she's not silent. Uh, um, so, so no, at first, again, there was this... Again, you know, to start a business and to, to take the dip and the dive into the CPG or, or a startup world, you, you need to have a little bit of, you know, confidence, have a little bit of na- naivete and be a little foolish, a little bit. Of, it's a combination of, of, of everything. You know, my approach is like, I only need one hot sauce. I only need one skew. Like Tapatio is one, you know, Cholula for the main, it's one, you know, Tabasco, you just, you know, other, they, they have other skews, but they have one, like one main. Yeah. So like, I'll make it with one. That's the, the, the foolishness and the naivete that, that kind of dive into with. And then, you know, you start receiving the, the feedback. And then, so for us, what happened, so we bootstrapped this from the get-go. So the company that I worked for had been uh, sold. And so I got some severance from that and I got a little bonus and I got some, 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 some packages on that. So that, that with, with my wife's blessing, she said, like, let, we can allocate that to, to starting the business, right? Let's see how it goes. Let, let's give it a year, you know, a famous, famous last yeah. words. Like, let, let, let's give it a year. Let's see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> and so for us, I started the hustle right away. I, I mean, I, I immediately put my, my, my door-to-door sales rep yeah. cap, which brought that, which that's how I started in the United States. And it was easy for me just, you know, waking up early, cracking the dawn, 5 a.m. Cause that I know that I know that there's a very tight window for buyers or grocery store managers to receive you, right? Because then after six, it's go time. Like they won't see anyone. They're super focused on the inventory and receiving orders and the customer and all that stuff. 
and so you know fairly quickly we got a couple of uh, accounts in in San Francisco that jumped into the into the into yeah we'll bring your hot your hot sauce you're you're local and uh, let's see let we like the story let let's see how it goes and then from there literally just because one account took it, then the the competition wanted it because they didn't want it, and so and, and because I'm local and I'm, I was leaning in on the local stuff, local, 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 and it it, it kind of caught fire within the Bay Area specialty natural accounts uh, independently, and then all of a sudden by the end of the year the buyers were like, your product's doing really really well, you know what it would work is if you had you know more more other skews, other flavors, and then you can do like a little brand block, you know, brand more, you extend your, your brand presence. And I'm like, can I curse? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. I should know <laughs> this, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm from, I'm, You're from I'm, CPG. I'm, I'm the CPG. Yeah. This is I'm, your world, I, I yeah. I should fucking know this, right? So, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and so that's helped. So, so later that same year, we, we, we sold our first bottle in 2018, Late 2018, I was already, uh, you know, launching our second SKU, which is the Salsa Verde. Did your mom help in the creation of all these all other SKUs? All of them are, are, are based. So the Salsa Verde is 100% my mom's recipe. And then uh, that also kind of took off. I think it was so interesting. There was not a Salsa Verde in, uh, in the format that I was offering. And, and, and that was also became a really good seller. And... And then I just started seeing the, 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 the traction, right? And so I'm like, all right, all right. And so obviously, I, what's another popular flavor? And then that's chipotle and then habanero. And, and so chipotle, my mom had done in her household, so same recipe. Habanero was the one that she didn't because habanero is actually a, a pepper that uh, it's not grown in the northern Mexico. It's more in, in southern Mexico. But I knew that habanero was, was catching up. I knew that I, uh, habanero... It's hot as hell, and so a lot of people don't, 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 don't exactly intimidating and, and don't want to try it because of that. So I wanted to make sure that using kind of like the same base ingredients. So if you look, except for salsa verde, the hot sauce, chipotle, and habanero, will have uh, vinegar, cumin, oregano, black pepper, and salt. And so those, those, that base gives it that, that tia lupita flavoring so yeah so i did that with a but i want to make, make sure that you could taste the habanero and enjoy it and it's that it didn't fatigue your taste buds and and then you're like um yeah i'm not gonna use it done. again exactly yeah. so that's why we used you know we got creative with using carrots you know the, dilu diluting the heat with carrots and onions and mangoes and dates and then so once you have these four so once you have all you're all ready to go you go to your existing accounts they go they lean back in Things are moving. You're probably things are moving. The I, I, things are going great. Obviously, I need to sample, right? Yeah. And so, on the sampling, I start to realize, like, you know, I'm, I'm always buying like, uh, like the, 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 the tortilla chips to. to sure. you know, that's how you sample hot sauce, yeah. right? And so I'm like, and every time I sold a bottle of hot sauce, they would Someone's take the bag. Someone else's. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, huh? All right, maybe, maybe there's something here, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 also then, I start to realize that that there was the. the this white space that I that, that I had noticed that like hey maybe maybe Tilupita can become more than just hot sauce maybe we can become this platform brand and kind of following my self fulfilling needs if you will because at the end of the day the hot sauce is self fulfilling for me I launched it because of the demand I've had in my in, in my network of friends and colleagues but also for me I'm I'm a user and I couldn't find I couldn't find a hot sauce in the marketplace that tasted like my mom's hot sauce, that had the right amount of heat and flavor and, and so in ingredients. So kind of following the same fulfilling needs, I decided, okay, Tia we're going to become a platform brand. And the next line of product is going to be cactus tortillas. No, it was cactus tortillas. Okay, okay, tortillas, okay. tortillas made with nopales. And was that hard? That, that just the innovation or the concept of that to get the taste well, right? Well, here it goes. In Mexico, they all, they already have this offering. So every time I went to Mexico, I would be bringing cactus tortillas for myself. Why? Because the product didn't exist in the market here. I love tacos. I, I, I here's the thing. I, I, I love tacos, but I'm always on a diet. And fucking tacos and diet should never be in the same sentence. So in Mexico, we realized that by by mixing cactus or nopales with the corn masa 
we were able to reduce the calorie and carb contents of the of the tortilla, which which is like, that, that's the guilt part of the taco. It's not the inside. It's always that the shell. It was always the tortilla. And so I said, hey, maybe I can launch this with a, with a Tia Lupita branding cactus tortillas. And honestly, I first went with Whole Foods in Northern California with a forager and I talked to him and said, hey, I have this idea. Do you think, you know, if I make it, would Whole Foods be interested in this? Like, is this something that you would carry? And so I gave him a taste of, of product that I had brought from Mexico, which by the way, it was crappy in quality and, and still we're using binders and, 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 and silicon sand, stuff that you wouldn't like to yeah. eat. But he tried and said, you know, if, if you can offer us something that is with simple ingredients, natural, and, and tastes better than this, I think we, this, this could work. And yeah, and that's how we got to work on, on that project. And very quickly, I had an opportunity. There was a, a consumer discovery show here in L.A., in Santa Monica, and the Whole Foods buyer for Southern California and New York were visiting the show. They stopped. They tried a tortilla. They loved it. And they immediately brought it like it was like so innovative wow. they love the the, the 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 nutritional fact that the attributes the the story behind cactus which is a whole another you know segment here <laughs> so they brought it first in northern california even like to the point that northern california for, for, for felt like less left, left out like dude we're the ones who were collaborating on this but you know they, they brought it immediately and so if you can make so so, so, so check this out I'm sampling the tortillas and someone tries these and it's like, these are delicious. Are you planning to make tortilla chips? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, I was not <laughs> planning to. I was like, well, you know that you are, you are, you have tortillas. You just You've cut already them got in the base. triangles and they can become tortilla chips. <laughs> and, that's, and, that, and I was like, that's no shit. Yeah. yeah. I am going, <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, yes, I was planning to make tortilla chips. And so that very quickly, man, Tia Lupita evolved into this right. platform, bro. Like on, on, just on conversations and demand and hearing ideas from other people. So in a time frame, you said you went from first uh, skew in early 2018 to, to yeah. the end of 2018. You had the the multiple hot sauce lines. So two two lines. So two lines. And then in 2019, I, I was I still only had hot sauce. So early in 2019, uh, Chipotle hit the market. Habanero hit the market right around the middle of 2019. Okay. And towards the end of 2019, that's kind of when I was just like, all right, I'm working on the other two line extensions. Got it. And in terms of just if we can take a a bit of a detour here. I'm just curious about the growing patterns of the cactus that you're using. Cause again, I know cactus in my mind grows fairly slowly. And so I'm curious, I don't know about the Nogales uh, cactus, if it's a little bit faster growing or anything, yeah, yeah. but like how often can you harvest yeah, so, this cactus? Exactly. For the- so, so there's, so there's this types, there's different types of cactus, right? Yeah. You, you know, you have the, the saguaros, right? That are the, 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 the ones that look like people. Yeah. In, take like a hundred years Arizona to grow Arizona and stuff like an that. arm. Yeah. And there's like nopales. Mm-hmm. Nopales is the one that are like, the, that have the pads, the, 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 the flat pads. Some produce a, a prickly pear, uh, which is also becoming really popular for drinking. Um, and it's good in beer. Yeah, also, absolutely. And so what's beautiful about cactus, I mean, it, 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 to the point that, for me, when I was doing the, 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 the market research, it's like, why hasn't anyone done this? I mean, it's like like the, t- the typical Andy Warhol that drew the, the can of soups. Like, well, I could have done that, but you didn't. It was Andy Warhol who did it. And so, and so I'm like, so check this out. Nopales. For us Mexicans, is part of our, our, our heritage, culture, diet. Like if you go to a Mexican restaurant, the vegetarian option is gonna be nopales. It's in, even our, in our Mexican flag, you know, the eagle eating the snake on top of the cactus. You know, it's it was, it's 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 very meaningful for us. But nopales has the same superfood nutrients as kale, moringa, goji berries, or kelp. So it's high in antioxidants, low glycemic, high in fiber, high in calcium, high in iron. But not only that. It's the most sustainable plant in the world. It grows in the desert, needs very little water to grow, and nopales reach maturity every six months. So we can crop and harvest twice a year, right? And so crops are yielding less. I mean, this is, this is going to sound super shitty, man. I, I, I'm sorry, but global warming is real. 
climate change is real, Cro crops are yielding less, and nopales is the only plant that thrives under that condition. So while we get our shit together, hopefully we can get our shit together and save this planet and contribute with, with you know, with sustainable products and reducing carbon footprint and all that stuff. We need to learn about this type of product, this alternative product that, that are, that are going to help us, uh, you know, continue living a healthy, sustainable life. Your business, in a way, has become future-proof just by virtue of the ingredients that you use. Exactly right. And yeah. I know, and, and I, and I kind of knew also that Nopales is polarizing on its own. Like, it's a cactus with spikes and it's green, and how do you handle it? You process it. Once you get out hand, it's slimy on the inside. So... I knew that, you know, if I wanted to reach the mainstream uh, consumer, that I needed to teach it in an approachable way. Put it as an ingredient in chips and tortillas, right? And yeah. and, and, and then from there, hopefully spark more interest. And, and I'm really happy that, you know, well, back in 2018, I did get a lot of pushback. Uh, it's like on, on the education. And it's like, especially from investors, like, how are you going to educate? Or are you worried about this and that? To 2022, we're going into 2023, and there's this surge of cactus brands. Like it's amazing. There's there's a brand in New York called Nopalera, and she uses the same cactus to do soaps and shampoos. There's uh, the, the 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 prickly pear water movement. There's a brand like a brand in Boston that that does a prickly uh, a cactus water. Uh, Vanessa Hudgens has her own brand called Cali Water with prickly with uh, prickly pear. There's a, a, a snack in Chicago, a snack brand in Chicago that uses cactus and chia seeds and amaranth. When I first saw your brand, I'll give you some, some user research here, and this yeah. is going to probably surprise you, maybe, I don't know. But basically, when I looked at it the first time, in, you know, before even really doing any research, I literally thought it was just like the color. I was like, oh, cactus is the color. I didn't think at all it was the ingredient. I was like, oh, this is a tortilla chip like any other one I've ever had. And it's just the color is a little different. And the, the color, color of the, uh, the logo the, on the, the chip. The or, chip. Or like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I thought it was. And it's then just thought, like it's the color of cactus. That's, that's why it. It's, they it's... call it cactus just to add a little flair to to the to the bag. That's all. Literally. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because to me, I, I think maybe in the tortilla chip category, like maybe the user is just conditioned. If if it's a chip, it's either a potato chip or a tortilla chip. A tortilla chip. Yeah. What other chip can there be? You see what I'm saying? And so no, there's absolutely. some maybe the maybe it's just after I was doing research, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Right. No. And then, and and to your point, there is there has been this movement of grain going into grain free right and uh because it's 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 better for your digestive system and and and, and there's other you know p people have other uh, autoimmune deficiencies that you know grain irritates them in in, in, in yeah in their it's even better for health. you because even the production so even even if you're getting like even oat oat grain is even if it's like in the vicinity of wheat at some point any wind can bring it over and now if you have a gluten-free product using oat flour that can go bad. Mm -hmm. We just had a conversation with someone who had to do a recall, even mm -hmm. though they're doing oat flour, but there were strains of gluten com coming from somewhere around the farm. Uh, and so even in that setting, right. you know, it's like you can have the paperwork, you can do all the no, tests. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you have to be really careful, Quality especially if you, if, you, if you have You're certifications like, like yeah. we do, yeah. you know. And, and these certifying companies, when they do their audit, they're really, they're really meticulous. They, they, they really want to make sure that there's no cross-contamination and that, we, that they know the origin of the ingredients where we're coming from and all that stuff. So when, when I start thinking about tortilla chips, then also through conversation, it's like, should, should we go corn and cactus or should we go grain-free? And I think I chose going grain-free because that would allow me to open more doors. I, I think because from that, because you know, corn chip, a corn chip is already, it's very known, it's very saturated. But if I went grain free, which is still on the uprise, and adding the attributes of, of this novel uh, ingredient like the cactus, yeah. I thought that that would give, help me open more doors. Yeah, and it seems yeah. to be working for you. Right. And and it has absolutely. Are you, are you nationwide with Whole Foods? We are. We are in five regions. How we, many regions are there? I think there are thir like 13, okay. maybe. But we're in the good ones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Only the best. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Mid-Atlantic and Florida. Indiana. Yeah. How do you get to Indiana? <laughs> yeah. Midwest. I, I still love you guys. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming, Coming soon. soon. No, but we just, we just got uh, our chips got authorized in nine divisions of Kroger with three flavors. So they're bringing sea salt, 
hot sauce and chipotle and we're gonna be in qfc uh, which is in the pacific northwest fred meyer as well pacific northwest ralph's which is southern california we're gonna be in, in um, fries which is more of a uh, nevada and arizona we're gonna be uh, in dillon's which is the kansas area then houston dallas we're really proud about that one and you know Big, big, big announcement. We just, our one, one skew of chips, our hot sauce flavor chip is um, going to debut at Costco here in LA. 15, oh, 15, nice. 59 nice. clubs. Wow. Uh, and during, during, yeah. I'm going to look out for that. Yeah, thank you. September. It's hard to get into Costco. Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, exactly. Big production. That's a big, uh, yeah, big production. So then the next question is, are you going to set up one of those like uh, booths inside <laughs> Costco? And, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we're, we're planning to itself. do that. Right. Exactly. We, we want <laughs> right. to we, we, we make sure that we're educating shoppers and, sure. and, and their club members and that we're telling them about the attributes of, of cactus uh, and, 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 and why this product is uh, better than other options out there for sure. So yeah, we're we're really excited. We're nervous, like you said, big production, big big out of pocket. We had to design a new bag because we're gonna go on a 12, 12 ounce bag. Right, it's gotta be Costco size. Palette, palette, yeah, palette yeah. Re ready to display palette with the the things and and so we're a small but mighty team of four, and we're 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 super, you know, we're st stretched thin, but we're. Really focused. And are you raising capital, or are you still bootstrapping? No, we 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 we're raising capital. Yeah. We, we so we we were able to bootstrap, you know, for the first uh, couple of years, mm -hmm. and then we were like, no, okay, we just scale this, this, this is becoming really serious. We do need so we did, you know, traditionally we did our our friends and family, yeah, and then from there we did a pre-seed, and so now we're doing a seed, right? Oh, right on. Are there any other things you're working on? Like, are there any categories that you see as interesting that maybe you want to expand into? Right, I don't know if desserts right. or Obviously, the chip aisle seems you've, you've dominated, but is there more there? So, so I think with chips, well, there's a lot of innovation still to, to, to do within the lines, right? A two ounce size, so a snack size to go like into the delis and, 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 and uh, convenience stores. Oh, you mean like a, the sauce? No, I'm talking chips. Okay. Well, you know, smaller oh, bag. Yeah, 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 got Snack it. size. Yeah. But same with hot sauces. We yeah, Owen would love that. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> crush. He would crush a little two, three ouncer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that, that's exactly right. So, for example. <laughs> and a little toothpaste bottle. I can just you, see you going, if, uh, a little cheese get there. Like a little. <laughs> <laughs> this is my to go <laughs> yeah. salsa. Or, it says Owen on it. He's or like, you can go really big. So, if you go to if you go to Costco, Canada. Costco Canada, like this is one of those things Costco that Costco Canada is is is, is bringing the a, a thirty two ounce uh, <laughs> bottle of hot sauce. So in earlier in the episode, you talked about how Americans' palates have changed over the years. Yeah. So in my head, when I think of Canada, I think of their proclivity to even less mm -hmm. uh, heat, maybe and, more, maybe their intensity. More. Well, there's a big Indian population in Canada. Yeah, there is, there is. So everything that that, that starts in, in 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 the states eventually makes it to to Canada. All, all trends and, and all of that. So remember, Canada is also really cold, and so hot sauce gives you that perception of of, of heat. So I was really surprised in, when I started this. We got uh, requests from Finland and Norway and Denmark. So. We shipped the Lupita directly to the Nordic countries. Not right? something I would have guessed. No, no, absolutely. And so what they tell us is they're the ones who said that their food is kind of bland. True, and so and that uh, and that they're, you know, they're, they're, they've discovered it with spicy and foods and hots that the flavors come a it little bit more alive. <laughs> and then, you know, it complements the, the, the winter, right? So, so they, they, if there's anything that makes them sweat <laughs> in, 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 during the winter. So I'm guessing with, in Canada... It might be the same, but there is a ounce. spicy trend awesome. uh, happening also in Canada. People, people are, are, are into. I think it's a it's a worldwide thing. So, are they connected enough where you getting your hot sauce into Costco Canada will eventually help you get into the U.S.? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what okay. we plan. That's Got that's it. what we're hoping for, right? Yeah. But again, like you like like you mentioned, you know, getting into Costco is, is, is really hard. They they they're very yeah. they're very picky. They're very meticulous. I mean, talk about restricted, you know, shelf space. Right. 
Yeah. Right? You get, everything is by, it's merchandised by, by the pallet, and you, you have so much square foot that you can allocate. So our idea is to, you know, hopefully, you know, mature our chips here in 15, in the 59 clubs, and then next year ask for, you know, uh, can we expand into 150 clubs or 200 clubs, and then maybe on year three can we go national, right? But the, the thing, it's, it's growing smart, and and at, at the pace that we can afford right you know it, growing this fast without direction you can lose focus and it it, it doesn't help if, if 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 we go nationally at costco and the product doesn't move when you think about the future of tia lupita are you thinking of potential partnerships or are you because th- when i think of hot sauce our chips or tortillas obviously there's a lot of brands that you might be able to partner with or where you could pair your offering with theirs. Yeah. But then there again, there's the route where you could just do it yourself like you have with the tortilla chips and the tortillas. And I'm not sure if you've explored that option with anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. And 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 I'm, o- I'm always open uh, for partnerships and, and, and helping uh, other brands. This is, is going to sound super weird, but it, it's true. Two years ago, it was still during pandemic times, for April Fool's Day, we decided we were going to make an announcement that Tilupita is now going into ice cream. And we're going to, f- we're do, we're going to do flavored salsa verde ice cream. Or flavored, Some people do that. So flavored yeah. uh, chipotle ice cream. Amanero. And so, so I posted it on social media and on LinkedIn. And, and it was such a polarizing post that people were like, this is amazing. When is it coming out? Or it's like, oh, I hope this never happens. But the positives were out, outpaced the negatives so much. And it's like, guys, this is April Fool's. We're not doing this. Literally next month, Double Rainbow Ice Cream in San Francisco reached out to us like, we used your chipotle in one of our chocolate chip ice cream and it tastes delicious. Can you come and taste it? And so I went and tasted the and it was amazing, dude. The chocolate chip of a uh, chipotle, and it's it was weird amazing. How that works. And they and they launched it, dude. They launched it this year, and it it's been raved um, with publications, and it was it got featured on the Today Show. Like, wow. dude, it, 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 it's, uh, it's amazing, That's phenomenal. But it, yeah, it's it, what started as a joke. It's a good PR hit. For yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, you yeah. know, became a collaboration, and, and, and so it's it's stuff like that. So so yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm but but there's also the opportunity of. of, of ex- we continue to expand. We want to be this better for you Mexican platform brand, right? right? And so Salsa Matcha is the other one that so we're we're launching. We're really excited about Salsa Matcha. Salsa Matcha is our the, it's the Mexican take on chili crisp, chili oil, chili crunch, right? Mm-hmm. Which is you know taking the United States you know by surprise. This is this trend is a, like they're putting. You know, fly by Jing on on, on on ice cream and 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 so I saw that there's all this all this uh, you know uh, craze for chili oil, but it's, it has this Asian uh, totally. flair, Asian taste. Put so I'm like dumplings, exactly. Yeah. So it's like we in Mexico we have yeah. this, we we have our own, but it's regional. In Mexico, it comes from the state of Veracruz, and so but more regional foods are are making it to other parts of Mexico. So it helped that last time I went to Mexico. I went to my parents' house. They had salsa matcha. I was like, what is this? I have never had it in my life. It's like, oh, it's salsa matcha. It's uh, it's uh, oil with pepitas, sunflower seeds, and uh, some have peanuts, some have cranberries, and you can put it on anything. And I'm like, and I taste it. I was like, this is delicious. That's, you know, one of the, th- the other things that I think with Telupita becoming this platform brand is we can introduce other regional foods from Mexico that even within Mexico we don't know about that we can bring them here to the United States and 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 we can find them a use I mean I was in Minneapolis last week and we were at a food show next to a next to our booth it was this uh, gluten-free brownie company and so I grabbed one of their chocolate brownies and literally poured oh, salsa matcha wow. on top of it and took a bite and it's like everybody was like what are you doing and I was just like I feel it's going to taste good. And lo and behold, it blew us all away. It gave an additional butteriness and spice and another level. It's just amazing. And it had the pepitas with, and so it gave it some crunch too. 
It was amazing. What about a restaurant? We always, we ever think about a restaurant just to because I think for, I think for your business and CPG yeah. is like the closer you can get to the customer, the better. And so right. the feedback loop becomes everything. But it's hard when you scale. Yeah. Right. It's like at the beginning, it's you doing the tastings, and at some point, it's not you. Yeah. And then someone's doing it at Costco, but it's already like the product is proven by the time you get to Costco yeah. or, or nationwide. And so, do you ever think about doing like a restaurant where you could, or, I, I, or something? I, I mean, or I did, up. I did at once, but it's like, take it easy, Hector. Don't, <laughs> like, don't, 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 like, don't. Yeah. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a different yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's we, a beast. we, we, you know, but, but, to your point, I think a logical next step for Tia Lupita is also to start uh, dipping into the food service. So making sure that our hot sauce, we have it like on a gallon or in a sachet or like something like, so that people, we can sell it to delis or taquerias or airlines. D Delta Airlines the other day came to us at a show and it's like this, this chip on a, on a, on a, you know, would be amazing. And so we have all this great stuff. But it's, 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 again, it's, we need to do it at our, our own pace, right? Yeah. So because how, how do you view your social media strategy, right? And yeah. so, right, because it's kind of tough where, like, really your business is selling to businesses. And so you're a CPG company. But at the same time, there's, like, brands. And so building the brand becomes your Instagram, social media yeah. is the only way of doing that. And so how do you, with, that, with the changing, it's changing every day now. How do no, you No, I just that? thought the same thing. I just, we just hired our online marketing and community manager. Uh, okay. Because before it was it was me, yeah, with what I know doing April Fool's yeah, jokes, freaking yeah. Instagram, exactly, you know, <laughs> which you yeah. know, to be fair worked. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, we could we could be doing so much better. I, I was born in 1977. I know I don't look like it, but <laughs> but but so I, I missed being a millennial by three years. So I don't know how to you know to connect with millennials or Gen Z. So I I knew I needed to hire someone from that generation so that. She can connect through her with the brand to, to to our to our to our tribe, right? And so we're super excited with her, and she's done a fantastic job. And uh, and so that was something that I needed to invest on, right? Like that, that we need it for sure. That's what we're trying to prove that these tired legacy Hispanic brands or Mexican brands are not connecting with the new generations. They, they connected with the boomers and all that stuff, but with the new ones, they don't. They, they, they lack uh, social media connectivity and then just was on, 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 the, on the ingredients, on the marketing, on everything, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, a buyer, you know, I think an Albertsons uh, buyer told us, like, those products are, are just collecting dust on the shelf now. We, we need to uh, revitalize this the Hispanic set. We need to bring brands like Tia Lupita, uh, like La Monarca, uh, Agua Bonita, Somos, Chusa, Nemi. I mean, I'm leaving a whole bunch out, but uh, it's, uh, it's, there's, there is a new wave of, uh, of Mexican-inspired brands uh, that are, that are going to revitalize this set. When you think about like you know your journey, just mentally leaving your job at some point, taking the leap, having your mom fly, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. What is like either the hardest story you can share, or, or you know just like a moment where it was like okay, things are real now. Like this is real now, and this is so <laughs> much bigger or different than I had thought. Uh, yes, I think you know. Let me get you a drink. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> when I started, I was doing the hot sauce myself in a commercial kitchen, right? My mom had taught me how to do it. And so I was the one who, and so I could only do seven cases of hot sauce every time I went to the commercial kitchen. So the moment that I decided the orders, the velocities have outpaced what I can do here. And I went to a co-packer and it, it was it was nerve wracking because had to give them the That's recipe, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, and then there, there's NDAs and all that stuff. But you know, if you t tweak something, and it's something different, and that right. goes whatever. So, trusting this person with the recipe and and, and, and that had been handed down, for and then and then you have to make compromises because you, now that you're gonna industrialize the recipe, well, you know, there's stuff that you need to that can can happen. Like for example, my mom would use fresh jalapenos. You know, when you go to that scale, imagine the stemming each jalapeno. So we had to compromise that we can, we can use puree, which comes from the same. It's the same, but it's yeah. just somebody processed it and pureed it, and then now we're gonna use it. So stuff like that that is like okay, this is, you know, <laughs> yeah. am, am I compromising too much? Is this, is this gonna work? Are people gonna like it the same, etc. Et it's stuff like that that 
you talk to other people and, and you, you need to bounce it off with other founders and other people that have gone through the same journey. And they, well, I think someone, you know, just told me, hey, progress, not perfection, right? And then yeah. I think that clicked on me and then I, I kind of started going. I started to let, let loose. But there's, dude, a whole bunch more. Like if you bring a bottle of tequila, man, I will, <laughs> and, and you have for four more hours, <laughs> raising money, uh, totally. getting all the struggles of, you know, missing shipments, uh, not getting orders. Like it's, it's a whole thing. Everything's a stress, but yeah. it's good. It's, it's good. Keeps you sharp. Absolutely. Keeps you young. Absolutely. No, nobody said that uh, uh, it was easy, right? That's because if, if it was, everybody would do it. That's so true. Hector, thanks for coming on the podcast. Really brother. appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your story. That's it? I was just getting warmed up. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate it. It was uh, a lovely time. Uh, thank you for allowing me to tell my journey. And uh, I also wish you guys good luck. And send on the, me the deck. This. Send me the deck. Absolutely, man. We'll yeah, do. Fundraising for sure. season is here. Yeah, <laughs> fundraising season is here. Well, it has to before yeah. before uh, the recession, I guess. That's true. Are, how are you thinking about the recession? Are you doing certain things internally? Well, that, to... Yeah, that's why we're raising and, yeah. and we want to make sure that we have enough uh, money in the bank so that, you know, whatever it's happens. Storm. Yeah. But, you know, as other brands are struggling, we are thriving. And so it's... it's You're the category, it's the category leader, it seems. Yeah. <sighs> yes. For now. Yeah. Keep it, baby. Hopefully. Yeah. We will. We'll, we'll. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate hey. it. Appreciate it. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.